Now, there are a collection of runtime library routines that support OpenMP. I want you to think about it this way. Most of what happens in OpenMP is you have a pragma or a directive that tells the compiler, do this on my behalf. So something happens at compile time. But there are things that happen that can't happen at compile time, that can only happen at runtime. Those are the things that we put into a runtime library. And I'm not going to go exhaustively through each and every one of the runtime library routines. Um, in the packet of materials online that go along with these lectures, there's an OpenMP reference card. On that reference card, it lists each and every one of the OpenMP runtime library routines. We're just going to touch on a few of them here. And you've seen a bunch of them already. I mean, you, we've shown you OMP set num threads, where you request a certain number of threads. We've shown you OMP get num threads, where you say, how many threads do I actually have? We have OMP get thread num, where you go through and say, you know, what, what's my thread ID? Here's a new one, OMP get max threads. Now, what that tells you is if I'm going to be allocating arrays based on a number of threads, Remember, I told you the system can give you fewer threads than you asked for. What max thread says is, I won't give you more threads than this. So I can safely use this to allocate the right amount of memory. That's what OMB get max threads is. Now, there's another um, runtime library routine that you can use for asking, am I in an active parallel region? Now think about this for a moment. I write a function, and I write that function, so sometimes it's called in a parallel region. Sometimes it's called not in a parallel region. So I have inside that function pragma OMP4, no parallel, pragma OMP4. If I call that function with that parallel loop in a parallel region, it's going to map the iterations onto the threads. Okay, but if I call that function outside of a parallel loop, well, there's no number of threads to attach that pragma OMP4 to. So then it'll just run at a regular serial. There may be programs where I want to know, am I calling this function in a parallel region or am I not calling this function in a parallel region? That's what OMP in parallel will tell you. Okay, there's another one, and I'm going to show you an example of this one in a moment, OMP set dynamic and OMP get dynamic. So let me just tell you about this and we can go on. Typically, OpenMP left to its own devices, the system will try and get really smart on how many threads you get from one parallel region to the next based on who knows what. Usually the system load, what else is happening on the system, how many processors are being used, how many are available, whatever. But it may, from one parallel region to the next, give you a different number of threads. That's called dynamic mode. All right, so OMP set dynamic says, set the dynamic mode, give me dynamic mode. All right, OMP get dynamic lets you ask, am I in dynamic mode or not? All right, so that's where we're at. Then there's a runtime library routine that says, how many actual physical processors are on this system? Think about it. When you write a program, you don't know if you're running on a dual core laptop or a eight core server. You, know, you, you don't know. Or, oh, what the heck, a 61 core Xeon Phi or however many cores we put on that marvelous processor right now. The point is, there could be a huge variation in the actual number of cores, and that could have mattered to you in the algorithm you're designing. So OMP numproc lets you ask the system at runtime how many actual processors are there. I've given you a bunch of words here. Let's look at some code, because I know I don't understand anything until I see code. So here's the situation I want you to imagine. Imagine I really care about how many threads there are in this program. I want to make sure, because my algorithm specifically is coded around a specific number of threads. And in fact, let's say I want that number of threads to be one thread per available processor, per processor on the system. How would I do that? So here's a piece of code that does that, and it'll show you a number of these runtime routines in action. So I have my program, pragma omp.h, I mean, I do have the include omp.h, because that's going to give me all my function prototypes and types. All right, now I come into the code, and first off, because I care about the number of threads, I don't want the system getting clever on me and changing that number. So, OMP set dynamic zero, turn off dynamic mode. All right, so OMP set dynamic zero, turn off dynamic mode. Now I'm going to request a number of threads. OMP set num threads, remember this is how we request a number of threads, and then I'm going to pass it OMP numprocs, the output from OMP numprocs.
So this is saying, give me please one thread per processor. Okay, so now I have my parallel region, pragma OMP parallel, and now I'm going to pick up my ID, you know, if int ID equals OMP get num threads. All right, so now I'm going to have one thread. See, how many threads did you actually get me? And so now I have that one thread. I use a pragma OMP single because I don't care which thread does it. I just want one of the threads to do that and everyone else to wait at the end. So now I have num threads equals OMP get num threads. All right, so that is how I would ask for a number of threads equal to the number of procs, and then I would go through and not change the number of threads with each parallel region, and then I would go through and I would figure out how many threads I actually got. And if I really cared, if it really had to be a specific number, I could inside that single construct say, if you don't equal that number, exit. Now, here's a little subtlety that, that frequently people stumble on. They will go through and they'll do OMP set num threads. They'll ask for the number of threads. And then they'll immediately turn around and go OMP get num threads. All right? Right after they set the num threads, they'll then say, okay, I asked for this many threads. How many did you give me? Got that? Well, how many threads do you have? If I do OMP get num threads right after OMP set num threads, I mean, look at this code right here. If I stick an OMP get num threads right after that OMP set num threads, how many threads will it tell me? I'm not in a parallel region yet, so how many threads are there? One. Okay, so if you ask how many threads there are outside the parallel region, you get one. That's why inside the parallel region, you have to ask, how many threads did you give me? Because you don't know until you're in the parallel region. All right, and it's important for you to remember that OpenMP specifically gives an implementation the flexibility to give you fewer threads than you asked for. So that's what we have on the dynamic runtime library routines.